Let's go to our guy right now down in sunny Las Vegas. Brad Powers. Brad, how you making out? Doing well. Uh, that's the safest bet each and every week. Sunny Las Vegas. Yes, sir. Love Vegas. I got to get back. It's been over a year since I've been there, Brad, but I got a feeling I will be back soon. Okay, so let's get right into it here. We have four bets to discuss. If you missed Monday's show, Brad gave out four best bets. Iowa State minus one and a half. Pittsburgh plus 19 and a half. California plus 11 and Tennessee minus three and a half. So let's add two more best bets and we'll discuss a couple of the big games here. Let's start with Troy. Texas State, we have a five and a half point spread for this one. What side are you looking at here? Yeah, I'm going to take the favorite here. I, I do have to say, though, this got hit uh, in the last 30 minutes since I sent that email to you. I still like it, still under a touchdown. But let, for grading purposes, let's go ahead and grade this at minus six and a half. We're going to lay it with Troy. What I've seen so far out of Texas State is the most improved team in the country. So why am I betting Troy here? Well, I'm betting Troy because Texas State has also played a very overrated schedule. And their results haven't been overwhelming when you consider the, the fact that they only beat a really bad ULM team by one in their last performance. They lost the best team that they played in the last five weeks, Louisiana. I'm going to tell you, Troy's a lot better than them. Uh, they played a bottom 10 Nevada team, a bottom 10 Southern Miss team. Now they're playing a legitimate Sunbelt contender. And Troy's defense the last three games has given up a total combined 10 points. They shut down high-powered Texas State's offense here. Troy minus six and a half. Okay, next up, we have an absolute monster spread. Vanderbilt <laughs> is a plus 24 and a half point underdog taking on Ole Miss. Who do you like here? Like the dog. Uh, I like this time of year. Let, let's go ahead and bet teams nobody wants to bet on because sometimes you can find discounts on those types of teams. So Vanderbilt comes into this game, losers of six straight. But I'm here to tell you, they're six and oh to this 24 and a half point spread. They haven't lost yes. any of those six games by tw uh, more than 24 points. And they played Florida, Georgia, Missouri. They played a, a bit some decent teams in, in this losing streak for them. What I do like is Vanderbilt kind of gets a reset off a of bye. Kind of happened last year. Uh, after a bye uh, at the end of last season, they pulled some upsets. Outright upset as a double-digit underdog against Florida and Kentucky. Not saying they're going to win this game, but I think they're going to be pretty pesky. And we saw that in their last game. I mean, with five minutes left, Vanderbilt's only losing to Georgia by 10 points. Yeah, pretty impressive stuff. Um, okay, so let's get into some of the bigger games here. Uh, we'll start with Oregon. Uh, they're favored by six and a half over Utah. You thinking favorite or are you thinking underdog in this one? Yeah, let me always preface by saying just because it's the biggest game of the week doesn't mean it's uh, the best value bet, although I've yes. done better on these big game bets than I have on my best bets, to say the least. Uh, let's go ahead and lay the six and a half. And what do I see here? Well, I mean, number one, it is tough to lay points uh, on the road in Salt Lake City, one of the toughest home venues in all of college football. With that being said, I'm not sure Utah's offense and their lack of a passing game can keep pace with a very balanced Oregon offense that I think will have success against the Utah defense while good. I'm not sure that they're great this year. They haven't faced a great slate of opposing quarterbacks. Uh, so for me, Oregon minus six and a half, anything under a touchdown, a little bit of value there. Okay, next up we have Florida. Plus 14 and a half, taking on Georgia. Who do you like in this one? Yeah, let's take a flyer on Florida, plus 14 and a half. And here's why. Uh, Georgia's playing their first game without Brock Bowers, the outstanding generational talent at tight end. Let's see what they got without Brock Bowers, because even with them this year, Georgia's only covered one of their first seven games. And now without your best offensive weapon outside of your quarterback, uh, I got to see it first. And you're going to go on up against a Florida offense that likes – to slow the tempo down. And I like that. When you're catching a lot of points, very slow tempo teams, Georgia's a slower tempo team. Uh, it's going to be tough for Georgia, in my opinion, to get margin here uh, against a Florida team that obviously is going to be pesky against their arch rival. How would you compare Bowers as a prospect to the last big time tight end prospect, uh, Kyle Hitt Pitts, when he came out? Yeah, he's better. Uh, just a little bit more physical at the point of attack. Uh, maybe not as a good, good of an athlete, but. Uh, my goodness, just a, a more complete tight end, a little bit better blocker, uh, more physical. They actually use him in, in like the run game even. He can line up at running back. Uh, so to me, uh, more tight end than receiver than what Kyle Pitts was. Okay, uh, let's wrap with this. Uh, we have a question from the chat. If you don't have a, a solid answer, that's cool. But Benny B asking, uh, look ahead line for Mizzou is plus 15 and a half versus UGA. What do you think of that? 
Yeah, it seems about right to me. Obviously, Spot's going to favor Missouri off a bye, Georgia off a big game against Florida. But I kind of, I'm, I'm kind of standing pat. I got to see Georgia without Brock Bowers first before I, I get a, a better evaluation on Georgia. And just to put in perspective, I downgraded Georgia's power rating a point and a half, losing a tight end. That's never been the case in, in 15 years of doing power ratings. A tight end's out, and I'm downgrading the team's power rating a point and a half. Yeah, Brad, really big on uh, Bowers there. Okay, Brad, uh, we're going to leave it like that in and out today on a Thursday. You got to love that. So we thank you very much for joining us. Best of luck with your bets this weekend, and we will catch you again on Monday, where I'm sure we're going to have a lot to discuss. Absolutely. Thanks for having me as always, Joe.